Many of you, I think, have already met, either in the last week or over the last years, uh, our speaker for this afternoon, Peter Henrio of the Society of Jesus. Um, just to, for those of you who haven't, just to give you a little background on this extraordinary man in his career, he was ordained a priest uh, 35 years ago, actually, and he doesn't look old enough to have been ordained 35 years ago, actually. Um, he did theological studies at JSTV, so he's no stranger to the Bay Area. He did a, a degree in political science, a doctorate in political science at the University of Chicago, and the University of Chicago always had a reputation among graduate students as a place that could scare the living daylights out of you for how long it would take you to finish a doctorate. So the fact that he actually took on such a degree shows a great deal of courage. Um, he's been a visiting lecturer at numerous universities around the country. He was for many years the director of the Center of Concern in Washington, D.C., which was a project founded by the U.S. bishops to deal with issues of social advocacy. But he reminded me that for 17 years now, it's hard to believe, for 17 years he's been working in Africa. He is the director of the Jesuit Center for Theological Re Reflection in Lusaka, uh, and is in fact now transcribed to the Zambia Malawi province of the Society of Jesus. Um, the work of that center focuses on political economy and development, democracy and justice and peace, as well as the church's response to issues of social justice in the region. He is a consultant for numerous ecclesial and academic bodies, he's still a teacher, and in fact he's also a well-known author in fact, he is the author of the best-selling Catholic Social Teaching, Our Best Kept Secret by Orbis Books, now in its fourth edition, and you can find it on the table in the back of the room and support his work and the work of his province by buying another copy of it. <laughs> um, it's, the, the, I hope by the end of the week in which he has spoken all over the Bay Area that in fact we'll, we'll have to drop off the second half of that title and that it will no longer be any kind of even poorly kept secret, all right? He's also the co-author of Social Analysis, Linking Faith and Justice, which is also available on the back <laughs> table. So uh, without any further ado, I would like to ask you to welcome Father Peter Henriot. Uh, thank you very much. I was reminded when you mentioned uh, the Ralph and Joan Lane Center, that Ralph Lane was an early encourager of me, his own work in sociology, and when I came to uh, do my theological studies here. So in a special way, I feel very privileged to be part of this community here. Uh, it has been a, a very good privilege for me, a wonderful opportunity for me to be here the past few days. Many, many, many years ago, I went to Santa Clara. So I still love USF, but <laughs> I was very impressed by what's going on on this campus, as well as USF, as well as JSTV, in terms of an international concern that encourages me very, very much. And so I'm very happy to be part of the program. It's been busy, but very satisfying, particularly in the exchange with students or so. Um, the topic of Catholic social thought is very large, and so in the exchange back and forth with Julia Dow, in the arrangements, we said, well, Catholic social thought and African public policy. I'd like to make two kind of cautions or two kind of limits as I begin my presentation. Uh, I'm a visitor to Africa. I lived there almost 17 years, but that still makes me a visitor. And so there are some people in the audience who know Africa much better than I do. But my reflections come from a very good 17 years there. But secondly, when I speak about African public policy, Africa is a very big continent, and it's really public policy issues in many different parts of Africa. So I will speak about African public policy, but specifically speak about what I'm most familiar with, Zambia, the country I've lived in now in the 17th year. Uh, my head is there, my heart is there, my hands are there, and I'm eager to get back in just another couple of weeks. Uh, but I engage with public policy issues uh, from a center, a Jesuit center, similar to the Jesuit centers around the world, that look at social issues, political, constitutional issues, uh, they look at church issues, but 
from a perspective of doing good research. We're a research institute that also does education, but we do advocacy for an activist group. And so we focus on some of the issues that I'm going to be talking about. So what I want to do is to say something about three things. I've been accused many times of being a Trinitarian, very Jesuit. All my talks come out in three ways. And so but the first thing I'm going to talk about is six key issues of public policy. Because when you talk about Africa and public policy, let's make it very concrete. We might have eight, we might have 10, we don't have time, we just have six. Six key issues of public policy. Secondly, I'd like to talk about the value framework of the church's social teaching, the Catholic social thought, that gives a way of dealing with those public issues that I think is very important. And thirdly, I'd like to simply end with some consequent challenges to this audience, to this university, uh, to this country that may arise out of looking at some public policy issues in Africa through the lens of the church's social thought. Now, six public policy issues to be dealt with politically, economically, and ethically, both at national levels and at global levels. Surely there could be others in six, but let me just mention what I'm going to say. I'm going to talk about poverty, gender, AIDS, conflict, governance, ecology. These are public policy issues. These are issues in which decisions are being made, priorities are being set, problems are there, possibilities and potentials are there. Uh, I come from a country that is one of the richest countries in Africa, very rich, with the poorest people in Africa, very poor. It's a country of Zambia, independent for the past 40 years from Britain, with tremendous resources of agriculture, minerals, water, tourism, people, people who lived in peace for 40 years with the envy of our neighbors, 72 tribes living in peace. It's affected me very much where I am, and a lot of what I speak about is because of that kind of position. But let me mention that first public policy issue that if I think if you asked anybody in Africa, uh, what would be one of the most burning issues facing the people would be the question of poverty. And I don't need to give a lot of statistics, uh, whatever. Uh, it's people who are living, surviving, uh, with great difficulty. Tremendous resilience, that's what I say, tremendous resilience. I'm not so sure I would be as resilient as the people I live with if I lived in those situations and circumstances. But poverty is a very serious, very, very serious issue. It shows up then in hunger shows up in a lack of education, lack of health care, shows up in poor water and sanitation, poor housing, a lot of the kinds of things you hear about, you know about. Uh, but the basic thing to say about the issues of poverty is it's an affront to human dignity. It's an affront to human dignity. Every human person, every woman, man, child, made in the image and likeness of God is to have the potential to be fully human, fully alive, and Poverty is something that curtails that potential. Uh, that's an affront to human dignity, and it's a blasphemy to God Almighty. Maybe the image and likeness of God, but we would treat people. So, poverty is a sign of a lack of development, and it's a cause of a lack of development. Uh, I don't, I talk a lot about the social teaching, it's a big thing for me. I don't always quote hopes as such, but I do quote this one, Paul VI, where he defined development as the movement from less human conditions to fuller human conditions. And as Irenaeus said, the glory of God is the human person fully alive. That's why the issue of poverty is such a challenge, not just economically, not just politically, but ethically, religiously. Now obviously, the question always comes up, well, you know, why is poverty such a public policy issue in Africa, in Zambia? Why, why is poverty present there? 